In this Starship update, the orbital tank farm comes to life, Booster 4 is removed from the orbital launch mount, Booster 5 stacking continues, and the propellant production plant comes online. Hi everyone, I'm Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, here to give you an overview of SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site as of late September 2021. All of the following photos and videos were captured by NASA Spaceflight team members Mary, Nick Ann Sweeney, and Stephen Marr, as well as our team of robotic cameras. Things got chilly this week in Boca Chica. We saw the orbital tank farm partially come to life for the first time on September 22nd. One completed tank was loaded with liquid nitrogen to ensure that the piping and the tank itself were able to hold cryogenic liquids. If this test went well, which it appears that it did, the tank will be cleared to hold liquid oxygen in the future. These tanks will eventually be used to fuel Starship and Super Heavy vehicles on the orbital launch mount. The propellant storage tanks at the orbital launch site are actually made of modified Starship components. They use the same tank rings and bulkheads, except they're used to create one large tank instead of two connected tanks, like those on Starship and Super Heavy. The final tank for the site, GSE-8, has completed stacking at the production site and will roll to the launch site in the near future. With the first GSE test completed, the tank farm is now one step closer to being ready to support the test campaign of Booster 4. And speaking of Booster 4, it did see a little action on September 18th. Raptor Center 67 was removed and replaced by Raptor Center 64 the following day. SpaceX is gearing up for a static fire of the booster in the near future, so seeing engine assignments being finalized is a good step in that direction. On September 25th, Booster 4 was removed from the orbital launch mount, after being installed onto it two weeks ago. No major testing was performed on the booster during that time, since the tank farm is still incomplete. The vehicle was removed from the pad to allow crews to install the chopstick catching arms onto the launch tower. It doesn't seem that Booster 4 was necessarily in the way of where the arms will go, but it's better to be safe and get it out of the way to prevent any accidental impacts. The chopsticks, as well as their so-called carriage, have been making quick progress on the ground. These two arms will swing into place to literally catch a returning Super Heavy booster, eliminating the need for heavy landing legs on the vehicle. They will then move up and down the tower to place the booster back onto the launch mount. At the moment, a booster catch is not expected until at least the flight of Booster 5. The carriage consists of two grabber arms that will wrap around the tower. They will be mounted on rails that allow them to slide up or down. The chopsticks will then be mounted onto this carriage. The chopsticks will also be used to stack Starship onto Super Heavy on the launch mount, eliminating the need for an extra crane. The other main structure on the tower is the Starship Quick Disconnect Arm. The main structure of this was installed a few weeks ago, but an extension was installed onto that on September 23rd. This extension features two grabber arms of its own, intended to stabilize Starship on the launch pad. It will eventually feature fueling umbilicals to load propellants onto Starship. The arm will quickly rotate away at liftoff, as its name suggests. Just next door to the orbital launch site, Starship 20 resides on suborbital pad B, awaiting its own test campaign. We saw crews finishing up work on its heat shield over the past few weeks. Now, it seems that the next step will be the cryogenic proof test, where Ship 20 will be loaded with liquid nitrogen and pressurized to ensure it can withstand flight pressures. The thrust simulator was installed into pad B on September 26th, after SpaceX rolled it out to the launch site. This piece of equipment will press into the engine mounts on Starship during the cryogenic proof test, simulating the thrust of the Raptor engines. This can only be used when no engines are installed. There's currently no expected date for the cryogenic proof test, but the next road closure is currently scheduled for September 27th. Ship 20, stacked atop Booster 4, will fly on the first orbital flight test of Starship, currently scheduled for sometime later this year. 
At the production site, portions of the next Starship and next booster are coming together. Starship 21's nose cone was spotted being worked on inside tent number 3. It's currently having padding being installed, which is a layer of insulation that goes underneath the black heat shield tiles. Nearby, its nose cone barrel, which makes up the cylindrical portion of the nose cone, is having its own heat shield tiles installed. Several other portions of Ship 21 have been spotted, including its forward dome and a forward flap arrow cover with tile attachment points. Stacking of Ship 21 should begin in the next few weeks. Inside the high bay, Booster 5 stacking is progressing quickly. It is now several sections tall. A large steel tube was moved into the high bay on September 24th and installed inside Booster 5. It's unknown what this structure is for. Booster 5 and Starship 21 will fly as part of the second orbital flight test. Next to the high bay, foundation work continues for the new wider high bay. Crews poured concrete and laid steel rebar over the past few weeks, a major step in the building's assembly. The new structure will be much wider than the existing high bay, giving SpaceX more room to assemble and process Starships and Super Heavy boosters. At the propellant production site, it seems that the liquefier has finally come to life. Transport trucks were spotted filling up with liquid nitrogen at the site before moving it to the orbital tank farm for the recent test. The liquefier will purify nitrogen and oxygen from ordinary air before chilling it into a liquid for use at the launch site. This will be especially useful now due to the ongoing liquid oxygen shortage across the country. Also at the propellant production site, crews have assembled a few large staircase structures. It's not clear exactly what these are for, but they may become the staircases for the launch tower. And finally, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, released a draft of their environmental assessment for SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site. We'll go over exactly what that report means, as well as the new details included in it, in our upcoming deep dive video. Be on the lookout for that in the next two days. And that's it for this video. If you'd like to support the channel, consider subscribing or becoming a channel member, with several cool perks available for our channel members. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.